All right, so I was watching this video from Dylan Johnson the other day about five common mistakes most people make running their cycling. It was very interesting, did enjoy it. Talks about strength training. So I did a little comment about strength training, just saying, you know, some of these studies aren't 100% good. But it did get me thinking that as I'm doing lots of strength training now, how will it impact on my cycling? How I'm going to make sure that I'm a fast cyclist due to increasing the amount of strength training I do. So um, we've got tombell.co, good lad, uh, was my coach last year, rating very highly. If you need a coach, definitely check him out. He uh, knows the science very well and um, has got some killer killer workouts uh, and made me very fast. Uh, so anyway, he goes on about this, um, about strength training, uh, the performance benefits. So we're just going to go from here. Overall strength, which is obviously good. Force production, basically you can sprint better. Injury prevention, which is also good as well. Um, and it is also muscle economy, you become more efficient. So he says the best thing to do is to start out with some easy strength stuff, body weight movement, so you get you, your body used to doing it, um, and then you want to calculate one rep max, etc. etc. So he's then got another one which is all about how to incorporate it into your routine, which I think is also very useful. But I'm going to touch on what I've done as well and how it has benefited me. So, first, we'll go over to some important studies. So, this study is all about um, people who are you know, elite level athletes, and that strength training uh, was very good for them. Uh, it included that strength training can lead to enhanced long-term and short-term endurance capacity in well-trained individuals and highly trained top-level endurance athletes with the use of high volume, heavy resistance strength training protocols. Um, so yeah, that's the sort of thing you want to be doing. And if you go over here, it was it talks about, this is a study I'm not 100% a big fan of because the control group didn't increase their cycling. So it's like, most people, it's either the cycling or strength training. They don't, they can't, don't just have an extra like five hours a week. Um, but it, you can see here that their five minute um, power increased from 371 to 400 watts. And um, the things they were doing was sort of really uh, low reps. So three to three times four to 10 rep maxes um, for lower body exercise. This is sort of what I do um, at the moment. But obviously, I've got slightly different goals. Um, so yeah, this is 185. Uh, no, I'm not sure how big this sample size was. Uh, we've got 11, so it's 11, so it's not great, but anyway. Um, still, you can see some big gains to be had. And this is also another thing saying that your VO2 max is going to increase. Um, it can increase running speed and power output of VO2 max, which is obviously something that's good. Um, it's due to you get less activation of um, so you get delayed activation of less efficient type 2 fibers because you're basically you to think about it, if you're used to pushing 400 watts and that's like a lot of force then suddenly when you're doing strength training like that's such bigger force that your muscles get a lot more efficient and also you have more neurons so it's like more of a neuromuscular thing as well you can fire more neurons so you can use like muscle fibers more and delay them uh, and we've also got another one here another study which is sort of just ignore because we, we, we've seen the evidence so now I'm going to show you what anecdotal evidence I have gained so you can see here this is last year I've never done any strength training before these are my intervals are training for hill climbs um, but anyway from this week I forgot to write it in I did start doing strength training just once a week just once a week you can see S and C S and C S and C every week and like I wasn't going that hard and like my legs hurt a bit at the beginning but you can see I was doing my SNC, I was doing my SNC, and like, okay, I was training a lot, but my FTP was like 3, 317, I think it was, yeah, about that. So that meant, you know, my 20 power is about 330. Um, in the summer, I'd done a lot of hours, but not much intensity. Anyway, so you can see I did this SNC. I even had two weeks off here, um, which you'll be able to see here. I still did, did my SNC. I was sort of like my off season, and then, you know, got back into training decent, did some track and stuff. Um, but anyway, I did an FTP test. I was expecting nothing. I was expecting the same numbers. And my FTP had zoomed up significantly. And I don't know what to attribute. People might say it's hill climb intervals. I, you know, I just doing a lot of intervals, but I really think it was the strength, strength and condition. You can see eight minutes, 364, second one, 362. So that's average 363. That means my FTP is about three, 323 watts, um, which, you know, is decent. I was pretty happy that I was like 63 gears, so like a couple gears having that um, normally. But even so, that was like 5.2 watts per kilo, so it's decent. But it, it should prove to me that strength training does work. Um, I think later on, if we sort of go a little bit later, um, if we go into April, I realized though that you've got to be quite careful with the strength training because what I was doing is I would have Monday off and my strength training was in Monday, on Monday, sorry. 
So what that meant is that effectively I was only having one rest day a week because strength training, I think a lot of people make this mistake, is not a day off. So you can see here, this is another eight minute test that I did, but I'm just trying to show. So normally what I do, so you can see I have a recovery ride here and strength training, and I realized that was actually really bad. I did it again here. And I remember doing some of my efforts and I just felt really, really bad. And then I decided, actually, what I need to do is this. I need to have a three hour ride. Okay, it wasn't exactly what I wanted. And I had my rest day on Tuesday. And I think psychologically for me, it was good as well. Um, because it meant I sort of like had the weekend three day block. And it meant that then, you know, I'd done my strength training. And I knew the next day I had a complete day off. Okay, fine, an hour, like an hour of 50% 50 of FTP is pretty much irrelevant. But you can sort of see that. I think it's really important to not do strength training as a day off it's not but i also think another thing that's important to think about is when you're going to do it so i think you know if you if you're going to do it on the same day as intervals you've got to do the intervals first but then your strength training is going to suffer so you've got to think which way around so for me this was at 7 a.m in the morning so it's pretty early so obviously i'm not going to do it intervals before but endurance rides i feel like you know three hours zone two that's it's not that taxing really um after a strength training thing so then you do that and then you have the day off and then you know the next day you're ready to go you can do some intervals on the bike etc um which is what i was doing then and i think that's important so i'm also going to show you that, 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 that as a cyclist you'll be able to make some real big gains so obviously like you think i hadn't done any strength training pretty much since april so I, i'd lost a fair amount of fitness in terms of strength but this is so this is my first strength when i went to the gym so obviously ignore the left leg because that is my broken leg. So just ignore that, like, gains to be had. So this is the leg press, 25 kilos, right? Monday, 19th of August. You go to a month later, 59 kilos, four times 10 as well, including everything else. So you can see that the gym gains you can make are really big, are really, really big. And you might say, oh, how this is relevant. But I think what I'm trying to say is that you can see on these studies here, the sort of gains that people are making. And I would imagine when they say these high high level athletes here they're probably doing a bit of strength training if you're doing none and you start doing some then i really recommend it but i'm going to caveat that with something else which is if you don't have the hours so if we zoom back to we'll go back in history to probably i don't know 20, 2017 okay let's say so let's say we're in 2017 um here i'm doing eight hours a week six hours a week would i recommend strength training then i don't know probably not I probably wouldn't I, I would say maybe you should do strength training if you like if you could like you know small stuff just maybe little squats or whatever but i wouldn't recommend just going to the gym for like an hour because you that, if that's going to sacrifice a workout i'm not sure i'd recommend it so what i would recommend is that you know you should do strength training if you have the time but if you're on really limited time it's sort of like is there is it is it gonna like is it better than cycling i'm not sure it is necessary i think you know if you have eight nine hours to train then you could definitely fit in half an hour strength training on a Monday, half an hour strength training on a Tuesday, on a, on a Wednesday or something like that. And um, the other thing it doesn't really mention here um, is sort of how often they do it. I think, oh, well, maybe it does. Uh, twice a week, sorry, it does, twice a week. And that's something I reckon. You think I made gains and I did it once a week, um, like cycling gains from going to the gym. So I reckon if you did it twice a week, that sort of is going to, reduce the amount of loss that you have because you think if you only do it once a week you basically have a whole week where your body's like what is strength training what's strength? oh i know remember what strength training is if you do it twice a week then it's like there's loss that you're gonna have let's say you do it monday wednesday or monday friday you know it's like you're not gonna lose that much your body's gonna repair and it's gonna hit the next strength training so you're always gonna have that stimulus and you're gonna improve but yeah i still think you can see some big gains here monday 19th of august is september 17th um yeah, so leg press is huge. You can see it's some of the other ways I'm doing as well. So I think it's it's really important. I think how am I going to structure it in next year? I'm going to try and do two two sessions, probably on a Monday, probably on a Friday or a Thursday, depending on my timetable. I haven't got it yet. Um, and then we'll try and still do 15, 20 hour weeks. Um, you can see here like February 2019, 16 hour weeks. Hopefully I should be able to continue that next year as well, um, which would be good. Uh, so yeah, I. I hope everyone's found this video very interesting. Um, if you have any thoughts about strength training, then please let me know. And if you have any thoughts, you know, have you done it? Have you not done it? Uh, are you a fan or not? For me, I, I, I don't like going to the gym too much, but it's it's tolerable. But I think it's really something that's really important for cycling. If you want to, you know, if you feel like you're slightly plateauing, definitely do it.
definitely do it because I think it's some really low hanging for like even a month of like decent strength training. You make some you make some huge gains. And also like depends where you live as well. Like weight obviously could be an issue, but I, I don't think it is in my opinion. I think most people, if they w- really needed to lose weight, they could just eat slightly better, go to the gym and replace that fat with um, lean muscle. So I think it's a huge issue. And also from where I am in the UK, we don't really have any big climbs in road races. You know, if I was racing 20 minute climbs every day, every week um, in road races, that would potentially alter me a little bit. I think I'd still do tra- strength training because I think it's beneficial. Um, also, just as a general human, it's quite good for your bone density, et cetera, et cetera. So I definitely would recommend it on that terms as well. But if we're purely thinking cycling, you know, it would change a little bit. But in the UK, most of the climbs are so short, five minute climbs. What's it going to do? Increase your five minute power. Is it going to increase your weight? Probably not. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you do enjoy. And um, if you've got any more video ideas, let me know uh, in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one.